Hi guys, welcome to this week's HomeKit show and this is a follow on from last week's uh, WWDC special where we talked about all the things we're expecting to see from HomeKit this week and uh, now that show's happened it's all wrapped up and we've seen some of those features come forward and we invited some of the guests from last week to talk about those features and what they think about them. So this week we've got uh, Chris from HomeKit Geek and uh, he, um, well, I introduced him last week. He runs a YouTube channel and he is a specialist in lots of things. And he has a famous tagline, which I'm sure he'll introduce you to you through the show. I've also got Shane and from Shane Creates. And uh, you'll be familiar with his channel because I think there's a lot of people that watches all of our channels across all of these people. And finally, Eric from Modern Day Tech. Now, all the links to their channels, Twitter accounts is in the description below as always. So go and check them out if you're not already uh, following them. They have some great content. WWDC has uh, finished up and um, some of the predictions that we expected to see uh, have uh, have come forward. I think it's because uh, things were leaked. Uh, for me, it was a okay show for HomeKit. I wouldn't say it was fantastic. I think I timed it. I think it was uh, four and a half minutes of, uh, of talking about HomeKit. Um, and I just want to understand uh, what you guys think to last week. What uh, and what's your biggest take before we go into the details? I know for me, Stop. I'm just happy we got screen time. So that's four and a half minutes. <laughs> I'm, I was like a little kid at candy store. So I just want to play coach. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, same so. here, man. I mean, there's definitely been some in the past where they don't even get that much time. So you know. Any news is good news, really. Yeah. I think yeah. last year's was last year's was no no show time at all, right? There was nothing. Well, they talked to, they talked about HomeKit Secure Video, wasn't that last year's when that yeah, came out? Yeah, last year, yeah. Okay, yeah. And then the so year many. before, and the and the routers, I think it was but, a logo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so uh, so for me, uh, so for me, the big the uh, the biggest thing from my point of view is the, and it was actually I missed it on the show, but Chris sent me the image of the home in the middle with all the different services around it. Yeah. And for me, I know I've talked about this before. For me, this is the start of Apple tying everything around the home. And I still think that Apple are going to call it Apple Home in the future. Maybe not this year, uh, maybe not next year, but I think it's going to happen. And also with some of the features... I was also thinking that um, the that we that lots of people are expecting to see like new icons, new um, new wallpapers. But for me, that's not Apple's focus. If you put your business head on it and think about right, okay, the business side of things, Apple's brought several features that center around you having to buy hardware because all the new free features. And I suspect with adaptive lighting, you're going to need a HomeKit hub to be able to do adaptive lighting. There's going to be no way you're going to be able to do that on a on an iPhone. Most of the automations you need you need a uh, you need a HomeKit hub to use it pure just with HomeKit. Then when you move to the HomeKit secure video side of things, you definitely need a HomeKit hub to run uh, facial recognition to um, uh, for the activity zones. But you also need a iCloud account that supports HomeKit secure video. So for me, this is Apple driving people to buy more hardware in terms of Apple TVs and HomePods, but also pushing people to spend higher in their revenue streams for services. Um, so the things for me from an Apple perspective are no-brainer, but for also from a consumer perspective, I think these are good features that are coming forward. I think they could have been a little bit more innovative, but you know, it's it's. I think it was a. I think it was a good time for uh, for consumers, especially for some of the features you're going to get, because you, uh, you do pay a little bit more with uh, with other brands. Um, so um, I don't know if anyone's got any thoughts on the I, home kit, I Apple think home side it. of things. I think you nailed it, right? Um, this is you have to think of it from an Apple business model, and Apple uh, historically what they've always done. Apple isn't the best across the board. There's lots of Android fan persons who would point out, you know, you got, oh, ooh, you got X feature, you know, 10 years later, Apple waits and Apple thinks about how all the devices go together. Like Shane and I, uh, earlier we were talking about how, uh, as annoying as it is sometimes when I get a phone call on my phone and it rings on my MacBook and my iPad and across the board, you know, chasing around trying to shut it down. It's also really cool that as soon as I log into my iCloud account on a new iPhone, I'm automatically getting things. So they, they design mm. things that 
to upsell you into their other products. As, and as you said, it's not just the home hub. Um, the other thing I thought of when you were saying that is now it's also if I want announcements, you now need a home pod. Right. So they've now they've got you into it's um, the ecosystem, it's the ecosystem play. Absolutely. Once you're in, you're stuck because it's they've, so good. They've got the hardware yeah. play as far as you need your home hub, which is probably going to be an Apple TV, which gets you into um, the Apple TV subscription, iTunes. You're probably going to be an Apple Music at that point. So you've got your match and, and your family subscription. Add on top of that your um, iCloud terabyte, two terabyte plan for the five cameras. And then you need uh, like, again, it's it's. The product manager in me goes like, "Yeah, this I, take more. It, it, what is the meme? Take my money now, right?" Yeah. And here's my credit card. Rinse it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think they've done a good job of that, and and they're going to continue thinking about how. Like, what I like about it is they're thinking about how this stuff goes together. Which, for me, if I compare it to some of the 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 other two big players, right, I don't see that they're that um, Amazon or Google has a vision of how this stuff at least not that I'm seeing publicly yet, is going to work together um, in, in a house, right? Amazon's got Ring, which does something a little bit separately. Google's got their Nest products. They're starting to get stuff together, but... Well, you, uh, Apple historically has just been, even way back in the day, so good and so much focus on user experience. And that's one of the reasons why I got into HomeKit, because I just wanted one app that could control all of my devices and not use all the other, you know, that user experience. So, um, they just, you know, they're kind of doubling up one on app. that, you know, one like app, they always cute. Well, you know, <laughs> you can, he's a pro so, now. So he's got several apps at the same yeah. time, but you know, it does it, you know, Apple's app shows me all my devices from every manufacturer right there. You know, as, as much as I, um, will kind of slag on Apple, for all the stuff they don't support in the home app. You're right. It is still the app that I use 95% of the time. All right. It's it's the mm. thing that I'm in when I'm checking stuff, if I'm turning lights on or off. That's still it, right? Um, as much as I would love that they still did automated, uh, advanced automations, right? All those kinds of things. Yeah. It's a simple app, you know. Like you said, you know, if I'm doing conditions, advanced automations, I'll go to Home Plus or to the EVAP. But right. to just turn on the light, if I can't say, you know, Siri, I'm um, definitely the easy one is just to get the home app. And it's just and, it's and an easy, yeah. easy app. And it's, it's again, it's that, that user experience, experience because right. they know that. I mean, they could add advanced automations in there, but who's going to be using that? You know, the conditional automations. Some of it's us, cool you know, for us. we are, right. but, you know. I've got no problem going to another app for something like that, understanding that they're thinking about the average user and that user experience and that's their focus and that's why stuff right. works so well. Yeah. So mm. I think if they do add those advanced options, it might actually scare people away. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I agree. So just moving on then from from keeping you in the Apple system to the bit they mentioned, which I think they just mentioned just to pack out the amount of time that HomeKit had was the alliance they've got with Google, uh, Amazon, and all the others they're doing. That, for me, they just spoke about it to pad out, I think. Uh, I also think to remind people what, what they're up to. Seen a lot of people ask, is that alliance going to be in iOS 14? What? Uh, there's obviously not. There's nothing to do with that, because I bet they've even not got even past the stage of how things are going to connect together and how things are going to work. But what's your, well, what's your take on it? What, what do you think about the, uh, where that's taken us? I think that was just Apple. Kind of, that was the first time they've really announced any kind of commitment or anything like that on stage in regards to that alliance, as far as I'm aware of. Uh, so I think that was them just showing their intent and that they are working towards, you know, working with everybody and just kind of showing everybody that they're working for the, you know, the better, the greater good, which Apple is always likes to, likes to yeah. show, you know. I think that, you know, for smart homes to exist in the future and for more people to join in the smart home uh, platform, they have to bring everything together. You know, they have to make it easy. They have to make it simple for people to really embrace it. So if they go to the store and they have to think about, oh, is this going to work with home kits or not? That's too much. They just have to find a product they like, pick it up and not worry about if it's going to work. So Having an alliance like this is a must-have for the future. Right. Um, if you think about every single company right now who creates a light bulb, 
is currently going through and they have to define the data model for how a light bulb works. And so they're paying for engineers to define those data models. And so collectively as an industry, how many times do you think we've paid for those data models to be created? Like that's insane. So if we want prices to come down on the products, which we all do, you know, having this standard as, as a um, something that's going to exist that you know, big three, Apple, uh, Google, and Amazon, you know it's going to work across the board. As you say, you don't have to look at the box for the, the label. It's just going to work. Uh, that's going to be good for everybody. And then I think those all that engineering talent that we have is going to be focused on the use cases of how does this stuff actually um, connect together, which again, you know, it, mm. we're, we're collectively, um, I think that Apple said it because, yeah, it, it's, yes, we're doing this. We're, we're playing ball with the others. Um, yeah. I, I think anybody, no, but we're not, we're, there's no way we're going to see an iOS 14. I've seen too many, been yeah. involved in too many networking standards over the years. We will be lucky if we see it in, I'm going to guess, if we see any product that's compatible by the end of 2021, 2022. Yeah, yeah, at least. I think yeah. they, when they, when this announcement first came out, there was a date. I want to say it was 2021 somewhere uh, in there, you know, where they were talking about, um, but I, you know, another thing too to add on to that is that this will probably also speed up development times also. So you won't be waiting two years for a, a home kit doorbell, for example, um, with that open standard, it should really speed up that kind of stuff as well, which is, I mean, it's yeah. all just a win-win for consumers, but this whole thing creating an open standard is going to take time. So that's just what people have to understand. You know, when they see, oh gosh, I've, I've seen comments too on, on like my video, oh, Amazon's working with, with HomeKit, so now can I get my Alexa stuff to, to uh, work in HomeKit? You know, how can I integrate all that? But it's going to take a while. They're all working together on an open standard. It should be good for the consumer, but it's not going to happen tomorrow. Dude, you, you said know? the A word. Yeah. Well, John, <laughs> I don't have none in my house, so I'm not worried about it. I, 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 think, gonna, it's, I think it's good for consumers. I think it's good for the the providers, right? I think it's good for um, overall, uh, and it's gonna going to force the people like Apple, like Amazon, like Google to um, to differentiate at a different level. It's not just going to be, a, hey, True. I've got I got a doorbell and you don't. Yeah. Yeah. So. I do- one thing I don't think we'll see, I, th- I think we'll see products being able to be cross-compatible um, a lot more. So we won't be having to search for that HomeKit logo, works with HomeKit, uh, which we'll get excited about when we see. I I can't see um, Amazon devices being able to integrate with HomeKit. That's my own personal view. I, I don't think it's going to go that far. Um, I but but that's just that, that, that's just uh, what I think. I just think it makes no sense. What I think it's going to be eventually is you'll be able to choose as the consumer. Yeah. So they're going to have these devices that work with this new open standard. And if you're an Amazon user, you can use that. If you use HomeKit, you can. But it'll be up to you to to choose. That, that's what I where I think it's yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm with you. I think it's um, Echoes will be Amazon. You know the the Nest with the whatever Google Minis whatever those will be Google HomePods, uh, Apple TVs that stuff will be Apple. The brains will be the differentiation point, but the products. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. So moving on to actually what you know what it, what what actually is going to make a difference here and now, which is the first one is adaptive lighting. Um, obviously, we've seen it in other products. I know Chris, you've invested quite a lot of money in. In those products that give you that premium, not to uh, rub any salt in your wounds or anything, but um, as you know, I've installed the the iOS 14 beta, and um, it doesn't work right now. Um, I suspect there is probably some firmware changes that need to be made at the manufacturer's end to to make it happen. Uh, similar to the facial recognition features, which we'll talk later on about, because I've seen it working in some Netimo cameras, but none of the cameras that are here work with it. Well, not work with it to its full extent. Um, so adaptive lighting thoughts. What do you think? Well, uh, to, to, to your point, I'd be surprised if they have to require something from the manufacturer's end to get that to work. Um, I could be wrong, but what do y'all think? Because they're just saying that this is something you can do with any home kit light that supports warmth adjustments. So, 
for them to say that, I'd be kind of surprised for them to put anything on the manufacturer. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I will be cautiously optimistic because I had a source tell me it does require firmware updates. Ah. Like they told me it did. Um, whether he's right or not, I don't know because it's not in the it's not available in there right now. Yeah, um, right. And if they if they go that direction, it makes me sad. Right, because as yeah. as you said, Shane, I don't I don't understand if right now the hub has the capability to change warmth by itself. Why did you need to, you know, as long as it's a warmth changing bulb, then right. why can't you just do that? It's this is just some scripting in the back end. Um, the other thing that I didn't see was gradual dimming, gradual brightening. There was no mention mm. of that that I saw. So is this uh, I turn the lights on in, at, at eight o'clock in the morning and whatever I turn them on at, it's it goes into a uh, um, warm into you know cool during the day warm at night again is it like that or is it actual a the sunlight's going to turn on at one percent on 2500 in the morning and it's casually going to go up until the sun's up and don't mm. know it's gonna be interesting to see what happens with that i think it's gonna have some huge benefits um possibly um i don't think it'll go as far as some of the products that you've invested in chris so i don't think you should be too worried about the amount of money you've thrown into them um i i just like anything that Apple do, they go so far, then they stop and then allow other people that do it do it better sometimes to continue. That's I order to steal the idea. I totally. hope they do it. I honestly I hope they do it right because it's not a big this is not a huge thing. I would much rather they just delivered gradual dimming, gradual um, brightening, you know, that that sun sunset, sunrise, and allow it to work with anything that does brightening and warmth. Like to me, that's that. If they don't hit that, I will have considered it a failed feature, personally. Mm. Like this is these, this is nothing that you couldn't do already to some extent. Um, if you're using any any other home, like it's it's not hard code to write from a a, a home assistant standpoint, right? It's so I, yeah. I'm I hope I really do, and 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 it might be iOS 15 that they get it right, but. I'd be we'll surprised see. if it has, just from watching the keynote, I'd be surprised if it has dimming capabilities because I didn't get that impression at all. It looked like just a color option that you could tap on. Yep. Um, I, you know, it would be nice, but hey, I'm I'm happy either way. I think it's a cool I, feature. Mm, I you can know, see. I, I, brightness would be cool, but if we don't have it, I'm still happy just with the warmth changing. That's, to me, that's cool. In the ecosystem play, I can see them tying this into HealthKit and what they're doing around sleep, though. Right, uh, circadian cool. rhythms. There, there's a bigger yeah. play here that they could push in that direction. Okay, so moving on to um, HomeKit Secure Video, um, I've I've installed it. You know, you guys have. Well, you better have checked my video out and and give me a thumbs up and also subscribed and hit the bell button and all of those things. Um, it it uh, there's obviously facial recognition. There is activity zones. Um, facial recognition for me is not working, and I would expect that in beta one as as well as as I as I thought it was going to do. But I've seen, and I think you, some of you guys were involved in the conversation on Twitter today with a guy called Michael. He shared the images where um, it's actually announcing his name, and he's using a Netimo uh, smart indoor camera, which has already got facial recognition. Whereas all the cameras that I've been using haven't got that built into the camera. So again, I'm thinking it's some firmware change that needs to be made, but maybe not. It may just be, you know, uh, different people are experiencing different things as, as you do with any software. Uh -huh. um, so that's, that's going to be really interesting when that's finally delivered in terms of those facial recognition to be able to see when someone comes home and give you a notification through the OMAP. Um, another interesting thing is that he also sent a video to show the Ring doorbell through HomeKit via HomeBridge pushing the notifications through to the Apple TV picture in picture. So that obviously says to me already, it's not part of HomeKit Secure Video, that particular feature, because it wouldn't work otherwise because the facial recognition wasn't working. So uh, facial recognition and uh, what's uh, what's your thoughts? Um, so for, for me, the facial recognition is, is very cool, but I'm really, I don't know how much benefit it will have inside the house. 
to me, it's more about being outside of identifying people and alerting you of what's going on outside. So if someone comes to the door, you'll know as they're walking up, you know, who, you know, if it's a family member or if it's a friend or if it's the delivery guy. So for me, it's, I don't see any benefit for being inside the house. I mean, if someone breaks in, I guess if it can identify, you know, a family and then set an alarm off if, if, if it's, if it, if it doesn't know the person, but do mm. you really want something like that? I mean, to me, I wouldn't. So for me, it's more about being outside, identifying the people and learning you depending on what's happening. And then taking it one step further is if you want some type of automation. So this might be scary for a lot of people, but um, where you can actually walk up to the door and it will recognize you and it will unlock the door for you. So, mm. you know, where I am, like you said, I am doing a video on this with the Nest Hello uh, through the Starlink Hub where it can actually do that through HomeKit. And I know it's, it's a scary to a lot of people because, you know, how good is that facial recognition? Can you take a photo, you know, put it up to the Nest Hello and it's going to unlock the door. You know, I, I, so it's cool, but would, would you do it to your house? You know, most people would say no, but you know, you can also do that with other automations. You can have special lighting. You know, if someone is hearing impaired, they can't hear the doorbell, maybe, you know, flash the light red for mom or flash the light green for dad. That way they know who's at the door before they even yeah. get to it. I'm really so, interested and I'm really looking forward to that video. When's it coming out? Uh, if I can get it done, it'll be on Sunday. <laughs> I'm shooting for Sunday, <laughs> but it's a complex video. It's, there's a lot of different parts to it. And so it sounds I'm really interesting. Right. I'm going to go in the other direction. I think it's more useful in the house than it is externally. So one of the things that I caught was that the facial recognition is all going to be based on the facial, the people that you have defined in photos, right. which is good, right? Yeah. Are you going to, like, how creepy is it if someone comes up, you're a delivery guy, and says, hey, can I take your picture? Are you going to be well, taking pictures I, of, uh, right? So there, there's this, well, like, there's, I just don't feel the, like that was thought through. Well, with the Nest Hello, it's going to ask you um, for next time, do you know this person? So you can actually store the person. Nice. Um, so is, yeah. once we see an Apple HomeKit doorbell, is it going to do that, right? That, that's a Nest thing, and that's, um, I think, through Starling, right? But like, if you just look at, at let's bound it in the Apple ecosystem. I don't know that having to put stuff like people like that in into my photos and define no people it like doesn't uh, yeah no it doesn't work like no. So what you do is you you can use your photo library to define known faces. Okay. But if someone's not in your photo library, you can um, say for instance spotted someone unknown. I had someone come today. I could identify. I could type their name in say, I don't know, um, a UPS delivery driver who, who was always at the door, I could put a UPS guy uh, or, UP, or or DHL girl, because it's a DHL girl that comes to the door, mm -hmm. and I know that they're at the door. So, uh, so you can do, uh, so you don't necessarily have to uh, do the creepy thing, go up to them with your iPhone and say, can I just take your photograph? <laughs> yeah, and I, I think, you know, in, there's kind of a couple of things there, in my opinion. First of all, talking about Apple and user experience, how brilliant is it that they're using the Photos app for the known faces, you know, yeah. you're not having to do anything already. Uh, the, the people you've tagged in your photos, those are going to be your known faces. And you're not having to do like, you know, as great as the Nintatmo cameras are, you're not having to like build those profiles and identify people all the time. You know, so that's just one thing that I, I think is great. Um, yeah. And if you are able to uh, do something for those unknown faces as well, then that's, you know, even better. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. You can you just rename and, uh, what it does it categorizes them all together uh, so yeah it, it, it works really well and in terms nice. of doorbells then this is where i think the uh, the biggest benefit of facial recognition is going to be uh, for the doorbells and you know all of them things uh, we're obviously <laughs> we're obviously going to see some doorbells this year hopefully some doorbells that are usable so that's, that's, right. Right. <laughs> that's the key yeah we've already seen um, one <laughs> yeah I suspect, I'm not going to name the brand, but I suspect right, the right. brand will probably use, no, the other brand with N. Ah. Um, um, they're probably going to use this as 
oh yeah, we knew this was coming, so we've delayed it until September type of thing. But I do suspect that doorbell is coming very quick because they put something on Twitter the other day where they said they were passing, they were they were going to be shipping the doorbell to their ambassador program people to test, and that was the start of June. So I don't know. Don't want to get anyone on soaps up that a uh, Nitatmo doorbell is coming, but you know, it's 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 going to be a perfect use case. If you're still getting your hopes up about that, then, you know. So so to continue on why I think it's better inside is if you have, we now have cameras that are going to have private cloud storage. Data's not going external. So I'm a little more comfortable having those in the house. Now we have facial recognition of known family members. We can now start to create presence-based automations in the house. And that's that's powerful. That's every other presence-based solution that we've got right now is all. Um, it, it's this fundamental idea that whoever w- presence is defined by the phone you have in your pocket. And if we can give presence to uh, individuals, to kids, to uh, anybody in your house who happens to be walking around, your grandma who doesn't have a phone, you know, I think that opens up a ton of possibilities. Like that's what I'm excited about for it. That's a that's a really good point. And you can also use it just for, you know, on a simpler level for recordings like you do with the Nutatmo indoor camera, which is, you know, record only unknown faces um, is kind of common. So, you know, it, it'll ignore any known faces if you probably don't want, you know, your wife might not want you recording every time she walks through the living room, you know, so that way you can just ignore known faces. So that's that's another benefit inside. But I agree. I think it, it can be good in there, but outside is what I'm really excited about too. Seeing those notifications pop up on the Apple TV, I'm really excited about that one. <laughs> so, Chris, you think of like custom automations, like custom lighting, like this person likes it, you know, this temperature during the day, and this, you know, this, this other person likes it a different temperature. Uh, all of or, those things. Um, uh, music, music start playing X playlist when John walks in the room versus. Uh, when when Shane walks in the room, play play something else, right? A little Barry White, I don't know, um, <laughs> you know. So all of those, <laughs> nailed it. All of those are possibilities, right? Um, I don't know how useful that's going to be long term, but the fact that it's going to open up those possibilities, if you can, if we, and I don't think this is clear yet, if you have the ability to trigger based on a facial recognition from a certain device then I think lots of stuff opens. Can we can we convert that trigger into an advanced shortcut? I don't know. Like, the, I think there's possibilities there, though. Okay, so moving on to activity zones, one of the things that lots of people have been calling for in a HomeKit Secure video. Um, again, this is another feature that is working in beta 1. I've used it. Uh, I think it's really good that you can tap and create those zones um to and you also as well once you've created the zone you can move things you can move them out in order to create different and it gives you more flexibility than a simple box um i think it's really good how they've done it. you also can invert it as well so everything inside of the box is not counted um and it is working you know i used it with the ufi pan and tilt um did a little dance to see if it, it, it picked up the motion before. As soon as I went into the zone, it picked it up. Um, Can you have multiple oh, zones? Yeah, uh, I, uh, I had the other day um, 20, and then I got bored wow. of making them. I also run yeah. out of space as well on the screen. Um, I think it's awesome. Um, I hated the fact that the Logitech Circle 2, uh, if you didn't have their cloud subscription, uh, the notifications were unusable. I have mine on a window mm. mount, and it was just, I turned them off because I'm always, the, the leaves went, notification. Squirrel runs by, notification. Car, notification. Uh, this is awesome, um, and it levels the bar for all cameras that are going to be coming out, and there's a lot of cameras coming right now, right? So that's, yeah. I'm not reliant on the camera manufacturer for that anymore. It's part of the yep. ecosystem. I think that's great. Uh, I, I always want more. I want object tracking. That That's the other thing I would want. It's, I don't think they're yet, but I think that would be the next, um, you know, this thing here, watch that thing. And if it moves outside, notif- just notify me on that. So I've seen that in a couple other cameras that is a good a good feature, I think, that makes sense, right? Um, somebody takes my whatever, walks away with it, whether that's a wallet or whatever, you can actually highlight that object. Or, um, you know, I haven't seen anybody really dig into animal tracking yet. Do you get, do you get a notification on animal 
on cat versus dog versus you know some of that stuff that was already in HomeKit secure video from notifications for animals. But how are we going to see that? Is it are we going to go so far as be able to do facial recognition to tell what your two cats apart? No, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we need all that, man. Just be happy with what we got. <laughs> I want more. I think it's great. I we're, in our pre-show when we were, you know, I, I believe I mentioned that this is something we're gonna have. They're gonna have to do. I was surprised that it happened right now because I don't know if that was leaked or announced beforehand. So I was surprised to see this at the keynote, and it was just a really, you know, pleasant surprise. I because again, kind of like you mentioned, I know a lot of people. You know, we're bummed when they went from the Circle 2 app to uh, um, to HomeKit Secure Video because of some of those features such as uh, the motion tracking. Uh, so now to have that, it's, you know, it's just right there. It's a, it's a great feature. And I just, I didn't think we were going to have it already. So I'm happy. I'm ha- real happy I'm, about it. As, as, as much as I want more, I'm overall, and I think you asked this earlier, I'm so happy with what happened. We didn't get too much. Mm -hmm. We got um, all the announcements that were made were things that I think are meaningful improvements. And it wasn't so much that I'm looking at it going, oh, my Lord, is this going to be iOS 13 all over again? Yeah, right. exactly. It's enough that um, gives them time to do QA of the things, fix some of the technical debt and the backlog of of features. And and it looks like that one slide, like it's now becoming – it's not a – it's not a kind of a side project anymore. It's now becoming part of that uh, an ecosystem play for the home. Yeah, right? it's it's and more it's important. Like, it's than that just, one slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one slide sums it all up for me. It, it, whilst it didn't get that much time, it will become. Uh, they see sm- um, uh, uh, smart home and home kit, uh, possibly as the as uh, one of the minor services but it's going to bring in extra revenue for them and it's going to be something that's going to grow and grow and grow and i think they're centering all around that home brand and it's going to be really interesting well, what they can do this. as smart home is growing 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 do you think apple will get more into the hardware game for the smart home more than just homes? i don't i don't mm. i don't know that they need to i mean with stuff like home kit secure video well, I mean, why even bother when they could just let everybody else make the products, you know? We're buying their services, you know? I could I be think, wrong. But. I think the long-term, no, I think you're, um, the long-term game, that's chip, the connected home over IP. That yeah. that whole thing is designed to um, take the bottom out of the hardware, right? Take development yeah. fees down. Anybody, uh, take the... Uh, any barrier to entry in that market is going to be, you're just going to be able to go to a Chinese ODM, say, build me this camera, make it look like this housing, and you've now got a, a HomeKit secure camera with no cloud, right? So it's a pure pure margin play, right? I, yeah. I think it's, that no, they're they're doing a good thing, and they're, again, I, I would, they, I, I'll complain about one more thing. Five cameras, cameras still, still only five cameras. cameras. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they're, they're gonna they're gonna have to address that eventually. Yep. I, I would think. Um, yeah, especially we'll the amount of cameras people are getting now. And I think it's going back to the 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 um, uh, delivery of products. We're already seeing with the brands like Ufi and Acara, the, they're delivering really great value products that are also solid. You know, a couple of us have got the Ufi indoor cameras in particular. You can't. I cannot find a fault. Apart from HomeKit's not being delivered yet, I cannot find a fault with the pan and tilt for fifty dollars. So when 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 this alliance develops and it's it's going to be easier to deliver products, HomeKit exclusive manufacturers or people that put a premium on HomeKit exclusive cameras, or they're really going to struggle, you know, uh, because uh, this. Um, I think we're going to get into an all new video on on this topic about manufacturers, how they need to adapt and everything else. But uh, the likes of Yuffie coming forward, Cara coming forward, it's going to be really challenging for some of the more established, more expensive brands. You know, to to that note, though, uh, we probably forget often, and I try not to, especially with the content that I make, but uh, it's easy for us to forget how confusing this stuff is when you're first getting started. And I still think back and I remember when I decided, you know, because I'm the only person around here in my house or in my neighborhood that messes with this stuff. 
So I decided I wanted to get into smart home stuff and I started doing the research. I had no idea at first, you know, that's part of the reason why I kind of made my channel the way I make it and stuff on YouTube. But, you know, I was looking into all the platforms, what I needed to do, and it's not clear. So I kind of get those questions for people who really just haven't kind of jumped in yet. Uh, it's just they don't know. And so developing this, you know, kind of going back to that, when they end up developing a standard, I think you make a great point. It's just going to make it so much easier for people just to jump in. You're not going to have to worry about, well, I need to only buy HomeKit products or I need to only buy Alexa. Which one do I use? What's the difference in all of these things that, you know, people just don't get initially. So, uh, you know, we put a tweet out yesterday. We've got a couple of questions in. Um, first question is a guy called Jack Murphy. And what was the what was the thing that made you decide on HomeKit as your smart platform of choice? I'll go first because it was really easy. I owned an Apple TV. Okay. That that there was nothing more than that. It was uh, I was already in. Uh, I had an iPhone. I had a Mac. Right, and um, so I jumped in in iOS nine just as, as 10 was coming out. So just the Apple Home app had just been released. I think prior to that, there was only the Home Home 4 Plus. So it was right at the very beginning, Eve. You know, there was very few accessories available. and But it was just, hey, I wanted to do this thing. I'd, I'd experimented with X10 years ago and went, this stuff sucks. It's horrible. And Apple actually made it somewhat usable for me. Okay. Yeah, for, for me, I was already just a big Apple fan myself, and I kind of mentioned some of the stuff earlier, but again, I just did my research and looked into all the different options when I was looking into HomeKit or uh, smart home stuff, and just being an Apple fan already, I had Apple computers. I did not have Apple TV, and HomePods weren't even around yet. I, in fact, I may have had the old Apple TV. I guess I take that back, uh, like the first generation or something, but... Um, just being an Apple fan, I knew that they would probably do it well. It would work well with all my devices. And then, you know, the home, I think the home app was already out then. And, you know, the way it brought in all of the uh, manufacturers devices into one app, you know, just seemed like an easy, good way to go for me. Eric. And for, and for me, it's very similar. I, you know, I, cause I had an iPhone and second thing I got was an Apple TV and it just made sense to keep within the ecosystem um, and it's just, you know, I've tested out Google, I've tested out Lady A, and, you know, HomeKit is just simple. You know, you can do more advanced stuff, but if you just want simple, you want, to, you know, to really just, you know, be able to get in there, do what you want to get out, you know, HomeKit is there. Is yeah. where now, there, there's another expression, which is if you're, if you're not the customer, you're the product. And the fact, like, we pay more for Apple, but I'm actually okay with that because of the security implications and, and the, the commitment to privacy, right? Yeah. So I've got Amazon, I've got Google as well, but I'm really careful about where I put that stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's that's another good point is the privacy. And I'm sure once I, you know, in my research and started realizing that obviously the privacy, you know, is... Uh, pretty strong with Apple and something they pride themselves on with, you know, with everything, but HomeKit as well. So uh, that's, that was a big reason why I stayed with Apple. I actually did have Lady A at one point and uh, kind of had, you know, was doing a little you bit did. there too. Shame on you. And I know uh, it didn't last too long. I ended up getting rid of it. You know, once they broke the news one too many times, I was kind of done with it. So uh, I'm pretty similar, you know, Apple ecosystem wants to stay within it. Apple fanboy, that's my my reason, um, and it's got better over time. First, it was a bit wobbly, but now it seems to be getting there. Yep. So, next question is Austin from Florida. If you can name one of your most useful accessory, own kit wise, and why? Oh man, that's like naming your favorite child. That's a tough one. <laughs> Out loud. Um, <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> Mine is the garage door. I, I just love having the garage door. And it's one of the things I can show off. Like when people come over and they're sh social distancing, they're pulling up their car and be like, hey, you know, uh, hey, Siri, open Eric's garage. And it's just like they, they get a kick out of it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You did I it. 
<laughs> yeah, that, oh. that's, a, that's a good point. I was actually thinking the garage myself. I think the garage, when I first started, I, it, if you go way back in my videos, that's probably one of the very first videos I did was my garage door. And uh, I, that from the very beginning, I just I really wanted that automated. And that was one of the first things I did. And uh, I, to me, any uh, really entry point, you know, the lock also, the lock and the garage door might be a tie between those two for me. Uh, mm. Just, you know, make life so easy, especially with kids when, you know, I've got a lock that's got a touchpad also, but you can also automate it, use Siri and, you know, go to bed, lock everything down, stuff like that. So those entry points, those uh, products that, you know, cover the entry points for the house to me are probably my favorite. And Chris? The Hue Motion Sensor. That thing is everywhere. I have i don't even know how many I've got at this point. And just the ability to walk into a room and have all the lights just magically turn on, you know, that is, like, to me, that's always one of those. If you actually, if you actually sit back and stop, you know, knowing all the stuff that we know about all these things, the fact that you just walk into a room and the lights magically turn on is still just a moment of just like the time we live in is amazing yeah for me it's it's not one product i think it's the products that are in in this uh, where i record all the videos because um i've got a scene where i just turn on and it turns on all my lights to the preset settings to the background lights i know i change things around now but it turns my main lights on all my uh, my key light and my side lights it it turns everything on um so for me it's it's it's, it's that mix track uh, like shane i don't think i can actually name one product yeah now um, now you're talking about your favorite automation now i can go on for days about that <laughs> john what do you call your scene for when you're ready to record studio one or studio two okay it's very original. very original yeah very original that took me hours to come up with that one so guys at the end of the show um First of all, big thank you to the guys that have come on the show. Thank you very much for coming and sharing your thoughts. I'm sure everyone will find it really interesting. Also, thank you to the questions that have come in. Uh, we've, uh, we did have a lot more, but unfortunately we've run out of time. And um, yeah, hopefully we'll try and answer them um, uh, on Twitter over the weekend. Um, but yeah, uh, don't forget to check out the description. It's got all these guys, uh, YouTube, Twitter accounts. Uh, check them out because you know they've got some great content. Thanks very much. Speak to you soon.